John here guys and today we're talking about three brand new flight controllers hitting the scene uh, and we're just gonna kind of go over all three of these new things uh, new things come out all the time but uh, since a lot of these started piling up I thought I'd go ahead and just give a quick overview of all three and then you'll see each of these a little more and be able to get the flight feel flight performance uh, notes on that in future builds coming up very soon on the channel. So first, we have the Crazy Bee F4 Pro V3. This is a collaboration with Isheen, and it comes in the box. Uh, look how tiny these, these things are these days. Comes with your XT30 pigtail that you just have to solder on right there. Uh, no capacitor coming on these things anymore. If you do have one, I suggest you go ahead and use it. Comes with a little these little soft mounty things and some screws that look almost like nails. I don't know what's up with that. Uh, let's go over the board itself. It has the uh, typical toothpick style connectors on board that allow you to connect any motors that you're using. There is no motor pads per se. It looks like on this underside, they're actually conformal coated. So I'm going to actually be using the Zing 1105 motors with this board. And so I'm going to have to break these connectors off and solder to what is underneath. Um, it looks like pretty much all of the pads other than the power and ground are on the other side. And none of them are labeled. Now this is the one that comes with the FR Sky receiver built in. Now you notice they're starting to use a little bit thicker of a wire for this antenna. So um, I noticed on the last one that I tried and it had a little bit better performance than previous. It's still probably not gonna perform as good as an XM Plus, but I believe you can still install one if you choose. Um, I don't like that none of these pads are labeled. I mean, I know these are really tiny, but if you look at the new releases from Beta FPV, and nameless, which are kind of the same thing, uh, they have it laid out a little bit better. I think these are very close together. I also, when I looked this up, I believe there's only one five volt out, which is kind of a pain because these are so small. So what I think what I'm gonna have to do is um, use the power out from my video transmitter to go to my camera, uh, just to kind of make it a little bit cleaner, but this should be fine. There is a little boot button over here on the side. Uh, perfectly good. This, I did notice this is about five bucks um, more expensive than most of the other current models out on the market. I'm not really sure why that is. It should be a comfortable 10 to 12 amp burst um, rating for this thing. And it says it's good for two to four S. I'm probably gonna just stick to three S uh, for these little boards, but who knows, maybe I'll push it to four S, but you know. Pretty cool, another option on there. I really do like this one if you were using the connectors. I don't think I'm going to, but uh, it is very convenient if you're using something like the little floaters, which do have those connectors on there. Next up, we have the Racer Star Mellow. This is an F4 flight controller that has a variety of different features on here. It has all of the traditional F4 things on here, MP6000 gyro, of course. Um, but one of the most notable things is, what is this? That looks like a Bluetooth adapter. It is! This has a SpeedyB Bluetooth adapter built on to the flight controller. That means that you can connect to Betaflight via your mobile cellular phone uh, with the app on board for iOS or Android and be able to manipulate all of the Betaflight settings, including the CLI. Now, the SpeedyB team has been hard at work giving you all of the available features on the full desktop version of Betaflight in the palm of your hand. Very impressive. It also has an SD card to be able to look at your black box logs. Now, that's not something that I typically do, but a lot of tuners definitely love the black box option to be able to tune out any issues in flight, feel, or performance. Um, one thing that I did note about this is 
it doesn't come with the harness. If you look inside this bag, it's just like a whole bunch of random wires. There's no harness here. Like, what am I supposed to do with this? This is kind of a pain. I mean, there are individual pads to be able to do your motors to, and some people do prefer to hard solder up, but I like to have at least the option for a harness, uh, and that doesn't come with it. I do, however, appreciate all these little wires. This is gonna help me to do like three or four builds because you always need these for like your receiver or whatnot. Uh, so that is handy, um, but hey, not bad. If you want Bluetooth built in, this is a pretty good option. Very impressive. And lastly, we have the next collaboration with Racerstar and Airbot. What? Yes, long. It was suspected that these two were working together with the release of the Racerstar Anniversary Edition. Um, ESC which is the most bulletproof ESC on the market. And now these are confirmed because we do know for a fact that this is a collaboration with Racerstar and Airbot. Uh, so it actually, it's really just Airbot is making this whole board and they're putting the Racerstar um, branding on it. Now, look at one thing that is pretty significant here. And that is that this backside is almost completely flat meaning that you can easily mount a VTX um, right here or a receiver. And I love having that option to be able to make your build stack nice and clean. Look at this, look at the little touches on here, like a gold USB connector. Oh man, this fly controller, the red and gold color scheme is absolutely baller and it comes with some little purple soft mounty things. I love that this comes with a little tech sheet to be able to tell you all of the things on board. Of course, it is an F7 processor. Ooh, <laughs> it also has optional Bluetooth that you can install, um, I believe, or it may come shipped that way. Like, I really didn't need that, so I just, you know, whatever. This is one of the flight controllers that is supported by Emu Flight, which is the next iteration of Butterflight. Whoever's left from over that from that team, is working on that. It also has um, built-in black box on board, which is very cool. It has a nine volt optional back. Uh, and of course, um, this one also does not come with its own harness, which is weird, guys. It's really weird. Um, you know, like, whatever. So I guess they just want you to like manually solder all your motors on here instead of using a connector, which technically if you're racing is going to be stronger and better, but come on. It does have a special design filter system called the Good Dream that will reduce noise from the power line. Um, that's really, really cool. Hopefully that doesn't end up being a nightmare. It also has a uh, strong pad design um, and what that is what they're calling meaning that all of their pads go from one side to the other. So if you accidentally rip a pad, no fear, you can just go to the other side and connection is here. Uh, in the pictures, I did believe this was gonna be all the way flat on one side, but now that I'm looking at it, it's not completely flat. It has these little thingies soldered on here. What are those thingies? I don't know what the hell they are. Um, it's not really a component that I typically see on, uh, and it says they're the backs, like there's a camera, oh, here, see, it says there is the camera back, optional Bluetooth module, and a flight controller back. Um, so, you know, whatever, that seems like overkill to me, uh, but, you know, really, really nice flight controller option. Um, there is not any other F7 flight controllers out there that I'm aware of that have a flat side end. Um, because of these backs that they've installed, it's not completely flat, but it's plenty of room to be able to install most um, video transmitters here in the middle, and then you could actually run your receiver out on the side or, or vice versa if you're running something small, like one of these nano ones. 
Um, so I'm really excited to get this up in the air. I'm not sure what I'm gonna combine with this to make a really cool build. What do you guys suggest? There's gonna be a lot of content coming up very soon, guys, so be sure to like and subscribe. If you are running any of these flight controller options, uh, leave a comment in the description. And uh, if there is any question, and leave a comment as to what is your favorite flight controller of all time. Everybody knows on this channel for the longest, mine has been the Hyperlite F4 OSD, but I'm seeing more and more uh, come out like this. I really love that these are sort of a pad slash hole option so that whether you prefer to solder one way or another, you can do that. I'm loving, absolutely loving the flat side. So thanks guys.